and we're proud to be joined by Fresh Direct. Fresh Direct is a food tech company in the Northeast leading online fresh food grocer, delivering directly to customers throughout seven states, including New York City, Philadelphia, and the greater Washington, D.C. metro area. Fresh Direct is committed to sourcing the freshest and best tasting meat, fish, produce, and specialty items through direct relationships with suppliers, growers, and farmers. In 2016, Fresh Direct expanded its portfolio, portfolio in New York City with the launch of Food Kick, an on-demand business that caters to the needs of urban dwellers with a curated selection of fresh food, alcohol, and essentials, all delivered within an hour. Next slide, please. Very glad also to be joined by today's presenter, Michelle Harmon Matson. Michelle is Senior Vice President, Brand Partnerships for Fresh Direct, leading all shopper marketing efforts across the Fresh Direct experience to connect brands with the company's massive base of highly engaged online shoppers. Previously, Michelle was Vice President, Director of Global Strategy and Partnerships for MediaVest. In that role, she developed entertainment properties for Procter & Gamble Entertainment, working closely with producers and content creators, and led sponsorship and business development for the People's Choice Awards. Prior to MediaVest, Michelle was Vice President of Branded Entertainment for 19 Entertainment, where she led branded entertainment and sponsorship for American Idol and So You Think You Could Dance. Michelle is a board director for the She Runs It, formerly Advertising Women of New York, and on Penn State University's Smeal College of Business Alumni Society Board. Michelle, over to you. <laughs> well, thanks very much. I, I have to always, I, I giggle every time I see my bio because I think I'm truly the only person who has been, who's worked for American Idol and now works for a grocery store. So I hope a few of you are giggling out there. But anyway, I, um, if you haven't met me in person yet, I am very passionate about working with brands and building connections um, with our fabulous shoppers. And so to me, this is really um, such an exciting time to be part of this business and to really be making a difference in collaborating with brands. So excited to, to talk with um, people working with Clavis and really to have everyone here today. So thanks for joining. I'll tell you a little bit of, of the background, you know, in addition to what Paul had mentioned, but to us, our real thinking about Fresh Direct, and then we'll talk more about things that are happening, it's really about making great food easy to get. As a matter of fact, this really should say great food easy to get because that's really what our co-founder, you know, came up with. We take great pride in working directly with farmers, growers, and suppliers to bring great food um, to our customers. And we're really passionate um, about building fan favorites, including new and great classic brands to, to engage with our customers. And that's really a lot of the brands that you all may be representing is that, you know, that uh, classic CPG, if you will, but it's, there's so much stuff happening there that it's really exciting. Food Kick is the new business we launched to the on-demand, and that really is the curated selection. So think almost of the best of the best, and I'll give you a little bit more insight there. But it's exciting to be part of an organization that really is more purpose-led in our, in our focus and then have the food tech behind us. But it's that passion for food that we are really in, enjoying. So let's think about this on a bigger scale. Let's think about this globally because today the grocery market is really interesting and when you think about what's happening in European but really all across Asia is we're seeing great growth in online grocery and U.S. is really small kind of in comparison with that and there's a lot of opportunity for you all and your brands to engage. We think about the change in sales that are being projected. So just from 2015 to 2020, the U.S. is expected to grow from 7 to 18 billion. So that $11 billion in growth is just pure opportunity for all of us with a 157% increase. What I found to be really interesting is that our customers, when we're talking to them, and then also what we're seeing in research art in the marketplace, is about half of them are coming to shop without a shopping list. And what we've heard up until now, and so much of the conversation has happened in the business, but oh, you want to be on the shopping list. And don't get me wrong, we love when we get great brands on the shopping list. It's easy for customers to come back. But there's also great opportunity for discovery and great opportunity to influence and inspire how customers discover your product. And that will be even some of the, what we're going to talk about today. 
when we think about the grocery online momentum for the U.S., it really is picking up speed. And this is really fun to be talking about how 2014, 3.5%, but over here in 2023, we're thinking 14%. So the movement to and the really adoption of online grocery is continuing. And so being part of this $1 trillion market, if you all who have leaned in already and are participating in things like this, and for that matter, your organizations really want you to be part of this movement and really because customers are there, which is most important, that centerpiece. When we think about mobile, have to take a moment to talk about mobile because mobile is here and customer engaged and I will put serious money that each and every one of you have been on your phone multiple times and maybe even been on the phone already while we're on this call. But it's they're here. Mobile's here, customers engaged, and they're really quite comfortable in shopping. And they're shopping for the whole shop. They aren't just shopping for items. And so we're seeing growth in the whole shop in mobile. Customers are very comfortable that it's a way for them to interact, engage. They're adding items before checkout. And of course, they're searching. What's interesting to me here is we're actually seeing search plateau. And so it really has become more table stakes. So customers are comfortable with that, but really retailers and businesses are smarter about it. We don't have to have them search the way they might have done years before. We're really creating um, opportunities for them to browse in ways that make sense for them to browse and ways for them to discover products. And so I'm excited that we're not necessarily seeing search continue to go up. But the number on this chart that is most exciting to me is adding items after checkout. Because if you're in brick and mortar, it is practically impossible to add an item to your order after you've checked out. Because typically, you're five miles down the road driving home, and if you're going to have to turn around and go back to the grocery store, that's normally not something you even want to bother to do. And even if you remember this item before you leave the store to take your cart and turn around, walk back to hike to the other end of the store where the item might be, and then stand in line all over again, it just is something that most people would rather leave without their item. And so to me, this is continuing to be a really fun place for brands to think about engaging in a very different kind of moment in time. We've been very excited and fortunate to work with Clavis, and so when we think about some of the data that they're providing, um, retailers and brands, we're excited about this ability to think about customized and personalized connections with, with shoppers. And I also think that this is, will strike fear in the heart of many brand managers' hearts because they're like, how much is this going to cost us to be able to create personalized connections? And what I think you'll see today is that high touch doesn't have to equate to high cost. It's about aligning content, themes, aligning messaging, and really even using imagery to help convey those ideas. And so we're seeing more and more opportunities for you to pick the select um, areas of content that make most to build those connections or make most to add some additional personalization and others where it's not needed. But it's, it has to be front and center because otherwise there's too many opportunities for the brand and the retailer certainly to miss. When we think about online hope, online growth and really poised for hyper growth as it says here, these are areas where customers are saying, we are open and interested to shopping online. And what's really amazing is these are items that you might not have expected. So household products, groceries, personal care, and even fresh groceries. But customers are interested in doing this. They are, they are wanting this. And so we're excited about this because A, it fits into our business model, but B, it's a great place for us to engage brand partners like many of you to really make a difference in how our shopper is engaging with our site. So brand new connections. Let's talk a little bit about how we are evolving our strategy and how we're really connecting to create engagement. And some of this is very simple, and I think a lot of organizations are really beginning to, to change their thinking on these because data, for instance, at its simplest, we all have lots of it, and matter of fact, many people are swimming in it, but it's the insights that are really making a difference. We look at our own data, and we've got you know, our own proprietary research, and we work with outside companies such as Clavis to really think about some of these things differently, because these are providing great triggers to when purchase makes sense. But it's not just about the insights. It's also thinking it's not demographics anymore. It really is psychographics. 
And when we think about psychographics and we think about solving for dinner, if I say uh, to people who I work with, you know, gosh, what did you have last night for dinner? It's amazing to me someone who is 24 can tell you and be so joyful about what they actually made as someone who's 44 and that has nothing to do with their demographics, but it's really all about how they approach shopping and so how they approach eating. And so we want to make sure we're talking to them in different ways. We also want to make sure we're thinking of our shoppers as consumers. And, you know, I often am hearing people now even calling people, but that human element when we reach out to them because they may not necessarily be your shopper today, but they're those people you're interacting with. And to us, it's always about not products. It's really about the solutions. It's about what can we provide, what holistic shopping experience do we provide to our customers? Because when they come to us, I don't want to have, oh, here's the product to buy today. I want to have everything they might expect to find there next to that product, everything they might need to find there, and then maybe even have other things that might be of interest and might be fun and delightful to add to their shopping baskets. And so it's about thinking what's that solution for that day? So we're solving for dinner and we're solving for more occasions for the customer. I would think that many of you have seen a chart similar to this in former presentations. And what I mean by that is when we think about the fundamentals of online and particularly on willing groceries, what the focus has been is What's your product information? What are you calling the product? What's the assortment? Is it going to be the same as brick and mortar or will it be just a larger case pack because everyone you, it might be stocking up? But these are very different kind of thinking and these are really basics. And I will tell you that, you know, inventory, for instance, being stock, it is critical because there's no question if we don't have inventory in stock, it's hard to get you to be in the back basket and it's certainly hard to get you for customers to keep reordering. But these are the basics. These are really table stakes. And so we want to be thinking about these different and really having the core of your business function really have to be challenged to reinvent how you're coming to market. So to me, it's really all about engagement. And engagement is consumer activated because consumers not only are inspired and delighted and educated by all of these items over here to the left and the product information you're giving, but they can share and participate and of course buy if we create the right kind of engagement because it's, again, consumer centric and consumer activated. When we think about developing and working with brands, it's not about creating a test and learn environment. It's really about creating, iterating, and scaling. And you might say that is semantics, but I really think of it as a mindset change because it's about taking ideas and learnings to build connections, to build loyalty, to build business, and really keeping the customer, that consumer, top of mind. And when we think about doing that, it's very easy to think about how we can roll out um, a concept and make it continue to the different points of connection. When we focus on test and learn, it's very once and done. And often it's focused on the negative aspects of the campaign versus where are we seeing the success and the engagement. Being in the online space and online grocery, what's also very exciting is really expanding KPIs. And some of these are certainly part of brick and mortar, but in some cases they, we just don't have the touch points and the data to, to have that make up part of the conversation. But here we really can think differently. Are we raising awareness and creating incrementality? What's really the basket affinity and, and our, how is that velocity? Because we have individual customer numbers for us coming back. But what is that difference in the new customer? Are we really growing new customers and penetration or do we need to change our strategy? But these are each to be determined by individual brand and retailer discussions, but there's a lot more opportunity to really explore what the benefit is for the business and how they're impacting the business. Okay, so three ideas that I, I'm hoping you'll take away with to think about how you're engaging. But I really kind of consider these filters for our programming and what we're doing, but they're also great opportunities to, to truly integrate our brands. So when we say think outside the cart and off the shelf, it's more I almost should be saying we need to be thinking in the kitchen because where's our customer? Um, our delivery person has delivered our customer's orders. They've, um, their customer is now unpacking the box in the kitchen and what's who they are and what they're doing. But when we think that as soon as we say that, we think from lifestyle to life story, it's not just how they're living, 
but what's happening around them, what's important to them. So is it an idea where you're really thinking, I need to plan for the dinner for the family tonight, or do I need to be creating something different for um, a party of four that's coming over? And that really takes us from transaction to transformation, because it's not just about the shopping. We want to be a, brand, a, a trusted partner with our customer. We want to help provide solutions, and we want to have our brands be part of that, because the more we are trusted, the more we really convert customers to be our long-term customer. So it's about building that loyalty. Customer loops. Well, I should back up and say, you know, the conversation really has been about customer journeys. And so you'll typically see, you know, a customer journey um, and how that lays out. Well, we've really started thinking about these journeys a little differently because depending on how the customer comes to us, they have a very different mindset on what they're interested in because online shopping is the new daydreaming. It's shopping anytime from anywhere. And really, what's the occasion that they're coming to shop where they want to take action? And what is that trigger point? Um, so how does this become part of your life and how do we become part of their life? And so orders are just a small portion of that loop when customers come back. And so when we're thinking about engagement for this, we really want to solve for dinner. We want to solve for the party, but we want to solve for life. And so how do we engage the customer at different points so we're converting for the loyalty, for awareness, and for business? And because very simply, if you, we've got customers who come to us and they order, and in one of our focus groups, we have a couple, and um, they talked about how they jointly decide how they come and they shop, and they pick out the whole plan for the week, and they put, pick dinners for every week, and then when it's time for shop, um, he sits down in front of the computer, no one's allowed to speak to him, and he creates the whole order. And that's how it works in their family. Another family I loved that um, the mother of twin daughters, and so on Sundays, she her really her quiet relaxation time is she brings her daughters into her bedroom, she turns on a movie for them, and she leisurely shops on her bed while they're watching the movie. Two very different shopping experiences and mindset when they come, one very much kind of with a, a, a point of view in mind and kind of a plan, and the other one really an exploration. But they both love the experience, love different things, and come to look for us for different inspiration. So let's talk about think outside the cart and off the sh shelf. And as I mentioned, to me, this is more about we're thinking than the kitchen, because we do really want to be thinking about converting loyalty, awareness, and really, you know, driving the business. So Valentine's Day. When we think of Valentine's Day, we love it. What's, what's not to love? There's, you know, there's chocolates, there's roses, but I also think it strikes, you know, uh, fear in some people's heart of what the expectations are for this holiday and whatnot, um, whether you're dating or married or whatnot. And so what's fun for us, we said, let's turn that situation around. Let's turn Valentine's Day into a month-long reason to recognize our customers. We wanted to really thank and delight them for being our customers, and really we wanted to create this as a love note to our customer to to kind of, you know, appreciate them for what they're doing. But it also was a great way to really engage with different brands. And so we created an entire 28 days of great ideas, things to do, introducing new products, and really kind of delighting our shoppers. But we gave them reasons to shop, we gave them reasons to discover, and really reasons to trial. Um, you can see here we even give away some free products for them to have fun with. And so each one of these tiles you're seeing actually link to a curated shopping page. And throughout these, everything that we're doing, because I'm not going to show you hundreds and hundreds of shopping pages, they link to shopping pages because we want to make it be easy for customers to shop. We'll make it be easy for them to engage with our brands. Um, and to me, this was an, a perfect way to bring lots of things to life in a very creative way, but yet really to thank our customers for what is important to them. A partner such as Chobani was very excited because they wanted, who doesn't want new ways to love Chobani? And they had new and seasonal flavors that they really wanted to highlight. It was an opportunity to kick off the month, to kick off these new products, and really delight customers. And frankly, if you haven't tried the peanut caramel satisfaction, I'd recommend it. Please note, I'm not getting a kickback from Chobani. They just were a fun partner here to highlight. But it's also really about looking at 
big events, big times, and, you know, who doesn't pay attention to the Super Bowl? I think our consumers will say that Super Bowl is certainly one of the biggest, you know, events of the year. And certainly from a television point of view, it is the biggest event, and for that matter, digitally. And so we want to be there, and we want to be there for them to make this experience even better. And when you talk about uh, Super Bowl to customers, I think half the people will probably tell you it is all about the football game and they really are focused on the game and they're wearing the colors of their favorite team. The other half of the audience may tell you it's all about the commercials and they think the commercials are fantastic and it's a great way for them to um, have some fun and laugh and see what's happening culturally. But I would tell you that Almost everyone will tell you it's also about the food and the drink. And so this is where we really have fun with the holiday, where we want to really take this idea, but really then think about how can we iterate? How can we take this and build it out across our shopping experience so it makes sense for our customer and is relevant? And this is where we engaged our full team. So we not only engaged um, our delivery team, but our entire operations. So you see the hat where it says game on with fresh direct and Tostitos. Our entire delivery team and operations were